Hello, hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being here in our third uh, session for the FLTA program workshop. And today we are going to be discussing the topic of preparing for the TOEFL. Um, we are going to be joined by Luis Albert Fernandez. He is an English coordinator here in Mexico and Alejandra de la Rocha, a current grantee of FLTA program. Thank you for joining us. Um, next slide. All right, so before we start our session, I'm going to do a very short introduction. I'm sure you remember this information, but this is information that you can share with others. Or if this is the first time that you see a session for our FLTA program workshop, this is information that is important for you. What is Education USA? You know what it is. It's a global network of advising centers from the US State Department. It is your official source of US higher education and information. We have 23 Education and USA advising centers in Mexico. Uh, they provide free access to introductory information on US study and study system. Uh, education USA targets higher education institutions, students, governments, and non-governmental organizations. What we provide is accurate, comprehensive, and current information about the full range of accredited US higher education institutions. Continue. Thank you very much. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so um, again, very shortly, let me tell you about our free advice and services. Uh, we have these three types of uh, services or we organize into these three categories. In-center services that include information sessions, one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions, workshops, official materials and guides for studying in the United States. You can consult them go to your nearest center, the center in your town, in your city, or the closest that you have. We also have services of outreach, that is information sessions at local education institutions. So if you want to have us in your school, just contact your Education USA advisor, and we are going to be very happy to uh, visit your school and give an information session there. We also provide workshops, and we participate at mobility fairs. We also have virtual services and advices uh, with one-on-one -on -one virtual uh, sessions uh, with webinars like this one, fairs and seminars. So with no further ado, I think we are going to move on and start working with Luis, right? Let's go, uh, yeah, oh, let me tell you a very important inform piece of information as well is that we divide and classify our services into five steps. We accompany you, we walk with you in all the process like we are doing in this workshop uh, through these five steps towards your mobility to the, uh, to uh, education, to, um, I'm sorry, USA higher education institutions. I'm sorry for that slip. Let's go to the next one. And I think, okay, let's start right away with Luis Albert. Welcome Luis. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adri. Thank you very much, Anna and Magali. And uh, nice to meet everybody here today. First of all, before we begin, I would like you to write in the chat, if you can, what do you think are your weaknesses? Is it speaking? Is it reading? Is it writing? Or is it listening? So if you could just do me the favor, and it could be the four also, okay? So not just one, but if you can write in the chat, one one answer or two or three. I oh, thank you very much, Mari Carmen. Right here, your answer. Thank you very much, Education USA. Mari Carmen beat you to it. Uh, uh, Mari Carmen says listening. Anybody else? No, only her. Okay. Well, I'll start reading some of them. Well, speaking. Okay. Thank you. Fabiola says writing. Ana Conde says speaking. 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 Alexandra says speaking. Okay. Laura Perez says speaking. Thank you very much, guys for participating. Okay, so if you guys would like to continue writing, what are your weaknesses in, in, between the four uh, abilities? It could be the four or it could just be one. So let's just talk very quickly about the different sections right now of the speaking. So the first section that you're going to be uh, asked is the independent speaking task, okay? Now you might be wondering, what can I do to improve my speaking? What I always ask, or I always tell people is, 
try to think of uncommon questions, yes? For example, I have a very uh, polemic question. Is a hot dog a sandwich or isn't it? So what do you guys think? Is a hot dog a sandwich? So if you guys could write your answers in the chat also, wh wh what do you think? Is a hot dog a sandwich or isn't it? So please, in the chat, write your answers, yes? And Guadalupe says, mine is listening. Very good, uh, Guadalupe, thank you very much. Can we continue with the next one, please? While you go to the next slide, I would advise everyone writing in the chat to direct it to everyone so we can read, everyone can read your answer. Let me just direct you to the chat. It's at the bottom of your page where you see the information that Luis is, is, is playing. It's at the bottom. Uh, you have a bubble there and it's uh, it says chat. Thank you very much, Luis. Okay. No, thank you very much, Adri. Yes, please. If, so if you guys don't know where the chat is, it says chat or it, may, it might be in Spanish and it says chatear. And make sure that you are directing your answers to everybody because uh, for example, right now I have my little blue thing and it says Mari Carmen. Uh, and if I write, it's going to go directly to her. So just make sure that it says everybody. Yes. Like, like the song of the Backstreet Boys, everybody. Uh, but anyways, okay. So the second section of the speaking is the integrated speaking task. So here, what do you have to do? Here, you're going to read something or you might listen to something. And then you might read something or you might listen to something and you need to make your, uh, you need to give your answer. Now, remember that in, uh, in the first part of the, uh, of the speaking, you only have a few seconds to think of your answer. So please begin to practice. How can you practice if you do not have somebody to practice with? I know that many of you have a cell phone. What you can do is that you can look at some questions, record your answer, and then play back your answer and see where you made some mistakes. Is it fluent? Are you answering the question? Are you answering under a minute or under a minute and a half? Because that's how much time the, the TOEFL IBT is going to give you, yes? So just make sure that you are answering and that you're using proper vocabulary and proper grammar. Can we continue with the next slide, please? And by the way, I'm going to read some of these answers that, that, that uh, some of you wrote. Edith says, I think it is a sandwich. Alexandra says, I think a hot dog isn't a sandwich. I mean, a sandwich consists of two pieces of bread, not one. Okay, very good. Fabiola says, yes, it's a sandwich. It may be because between two pieces. Okay, and Anna Conde says, in my opinion, I think the hot dog is not a sandwich. Like I told you guys, it's a polemic question, yes? Now, going back to the, to the presentation. So you'll get between 15 to 30 seconds of preparation time before each response, yes? 15 seconds in the first section and 30 seconds in the next section, yes? Let's continue, please, with the slides. Okay, now, some of you already told me what are your weaknesses, yes? But remember, that a weakness, we can fortify that weakness doing some exercise, yes? In this case, you're not going to do physical exercise to get better at English, but you are going to practice a little bit more, yes? Uh, how can you practice a little bit more? Or where are you going to get more elements for your uh, advancement of language? Through reading, yes? The more that you read, the better that you are going to get from uh, your, the better that you're going to get in in English. Why? Because of, from reading, what are you going to get? Vocabulary. From reading, you're going to get somebody's opinion or somebody's idea. From reading, you're going to get uh, the proper grammatical structures. Yes. And also from reading, you can start thinking of your possible answers. No, uh, you read something and then you say, oh, what could I answer here? Or what is the idea? Or what is the gist of the idea? Or what is the author inferring? And these are some of the words that are used in the TOEFL exam, yes? So work on your weaknesses, yes? Uh, and so remember that it's not something physical, it is something mental, yes? Yes, let's continue with the presentation, please.
So, the, uh, okay, so format weakness. In this case, we have different types of weaknesses inside of the TOEFL exam. In this case, we're talking about format weakness. These weaknesses deal with structural elements of the TOEFL, mainly question types. The type of questions that are asked in the TOEFL exam. Yes, if we're talking about the reading, for example, one of the easy ones is, what is the meaning of this word? But there, you have to be careful of the context of the, the usage of the word, yes? For example, if we are talking about work, the word work, the word work is a verb normally, yes? And we know that work is something that we do in our jobs. But if we say, oh, the computer works, it's not talking that the computer does something physical. It means that the computer is functioning correctly, yes? So according to the context of what you're reading, that's how you are going to be able to know the meaning of the vocabulary. And going back again to my previous idea, how are you going to know in context this? By practicing your reading, yes? When you're reading, sometimes an author is going to use the vocabulary in a different way. And it could be a vocabulary word that you might know, but you're going to get confused because you might say, hey, what is he trying to say in this in this reading? No, because it doesn't make sense. Maybe it is because the author is using that word in another context, yes? Also, you need to remember that there's also collocations and uh, idiomatic expressions, yes? For example, it's raining cats and dogs, no? If you translate raining in cats and dogs, you're going to say, what, no? Cats and dogs don't come out of the sky, no? But what does it mean? that it is raining very strong, yes? So you have to be careful also with idiomatic expressions and also calucations, yes? Uh, so in this case, uh, format weakness is also possible and we can also work on this. So for, ex for instance, if you're constantly getting reading to learn questions wrong, you'll need to tailor your study plan so that you're practicing these question types more often than others. That is just a suggestion that, that I give you. Can we continue with the presentation, please? Another weakness is strategy weaknesses. A strategy weakness means you're having trouble with a particular approach or test-taking method, yes? For example, you might struggle with pacing yourself on the reading section, or you might not know how to take notes effectively on listening. In a few slides down, we're going to be talking a little bit about taking notes effectively, okay? so. In this case, uh, when you're reading, don't try to stop on one question. Try to read, uh, skim, scan the text and see what information is important. Yes, of course, not all of it is important, but some of it is. And then according to the questions that you get, try to see what, where you're going to find those answers. Yes, some of the questions are going to help you because they're going to tell you in line five, uh, what is the meaning of this word? Or in, my, in line uh, seven, what does the author uh, infer? Yes, so that also helps you because like that you can start reading the lines. The next one, please. Work on your weaknesses. And another one is none of your four sections should bring down your TOEFL score. So try to figure out what you struggle with and then study and practice it until it's no longer a major weakness for you. So like I said before, if you're struggling with a section, try to practice a little bit more with that. But that doesn't mean that you should leave the others alone or put them on the side. If you're going to work on something that you have a weakness, okay. But also try to work, continue working on the things that you are good at, yes? So when you get the exam and you're doing the exam, you get a good score overall not just on one section, a good, a good score, and then on the other sections, a lower score, yes? Okay, let's continue, please. Now, work on your vocabulary. Um, so in this case, developing solid TOEFL vocabulary skills can be one of the most challenging parts of studying for the exam. Again, where are we going to get new vocabulary? From reading, yes? And not, it's not always reading something that's a book or something that's going to be very long. It could be a Facebook post. It could be a, a Twitter post. Something that is going to get your attention 
and maybe something that you're not going to know all the vocabulary. And if you don't know all of the vocabulary, read in context and still, you still don't know, but you're, still, but you're understanding what the meaning is of the sentence, okay. But now what you can do is investigate that vocabulary word that you didn't know. And another important thing here, uh, it's not only to learn the vocabulary and to say, oh, okay, now I understand what is the meaning of, uh, of this word, but apply that word into your vocabulary. The next time that you have a conversation with somebody, use it. The next time that you're writing something, use it. So it's also not only to learn the vocabulary, but also to apply that new vocabulary word. Can we continue with the next one, please? Okay, so one of the best ways that you can study the vocabulary is to make flashcards, yes? Uh, something that I recommend is to get a flashcard. It could be a piece of paper or a little flashcard. I recommend the white ones, or it's up to you. It could be the ones that have the little lines. And on one side of the card, you can put the vocabulary word. And on the other side of the card, you can put the definition and the usage of the vocabulary word. The usage is very important because there are some words that can be verbs. There are some words that could be adverbs. There are some words that could be transformed to adjectives, yes? And the placement of these words, according to the sentence, it's very different, yes? So we're not going to be using, and also, for example, the type of verb, is it a regular verb or is it an irregular verb? Because that also depends, no? Um, so also, if we're talking about the TOEFL IBT, you need to practice uh, the uh, verb uh, verb agree verb subject agreement. Yes. So what does that mean? That according to how the 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 pronoun is, the verb is the one that you also need to have uh, coherent according to the pronoun. No. So if we're talking about third person, he, she, or it, the verb needs an s. Yes, I know, I know. You might be telling me, oh, but I'm an English teacher. No, I know that. But sometimes in exams, those are the little things that we forget and we think that it's correct, yes? So check uh, verb subject agreement and that is going to help you also in the TOEFL exam. Can we continue, please? Now, here we have some new vocabulary, yes? So I'm going to read the first five because it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of vocabulary. So we have abundant, accumulate, adjacent, adjust, advantage and advocate, yes? So what I would like you to do in the chat, very quickly, I would like you to get one of these words and tell me what, how are you going to work on your English? Try to use one of these vocabulary words, yes? So in the chat, while I'm doing the, I continue doing the presentation, give me an example and I'll read them out loud and I'll tell you if it's a good one, well, not so good. No, no, no. So uh, please try to use one of these words telling me what are you going to do to improve your English, okay? So one of these words, it could be the first five, it could be the last one, it could be the one in the middle, however, whichever one you would like to use, okay? So I'll give you like about 30 seconds while I continue with the presentation. Let's continue with the next slide, please. Now, five activities to improve your vocabulary retention. Reading is one of the best ways to learn new words and reinforce ex existing ones. Like I was telling you, this is one of the best ways to improve your vocabulary. Reading, try to, you, try to read uh, college level um, uh, vocabulary words or college level essays, try to read those. Uh, and you, you might laugh by the next thing that I'm going to tell you, but another thing that I recommend is to read comic books, but in English, yes? Now, now that Marvel and DC is, it's a very new, it's a very popular thing nowadays. Uh, reading comic books, it's also very good. Why? Because comic books use uh, university level language, yes? So to read a comic book, you need to have a certain level of, of comprehension 
to be able to understand what they're saying. No, it's not only to look at the little pictures and say, ah, oh, okay, pow, boom. No, 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 no. It's also what they're talking about and the topics. Use context clues to infer the meaning of unknown words. Uh, the next one is vocabulary games can be a fun and engaging way to learn new words. So also uh, vocabulary games, there's so many nowadays online that you can find and that you can work with, yes? There's quiz notes, there's uh, also, for example, Duolingo, or there's other types of uh, word games that you can find. And if you type in a Google uh, search engine, you could put C1 level or C2 level vocabulary games. And I'm sure that you're going to be able to find something that it's, that's for free, yes? And that's, that's the, 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 one, of, one of the important things here, to find things that are free, yes? Okay, use new vocabulary words in their writing and speaking. Digital tools available that can help students learn and retain new vocabulary. Like I said, new vocabulary words, you can use them and you can also do some types of activities using digital tools or there's sometimes some PowerPoint presentations that have vocabulary words. Uh, and also in this presentation on the previous slide, there was a page that was mentioned that uh, it's uh, prep TOEFL and you, yeah, prep scholar, and you can find uh, the TOEFL words there that are, that are in the exam. So you can also begin to use them, yes? But remember, it's not only to know the words, but know the words and use those words in your everyday, uh, uh, you, well, life, no? So the, the, the more that you use them, the better you're going to get accustomed to using them, okay? So nobody has written any uh, examples with the vocabulary, the previous vocabulary. So hurry up, guys. Okay, the next one, please, the next slide. Ah, Alexandra, okay, let's, let's read hers. I want to analyze data in order to recognize the more, most common errors in students and develop programs to correct them. Wow, very good, very good, Alexandra. Just don't forget, Alexandra, at the end, we need a period, yes? So we know that that idea is finished. So uh, it's not only to write it, but also don't forget that at the, at the beginning, we're going to use uh, uh, capital letter. And at the end, we're going to have a period. I like that. Very good, Alexandra. Okay. Uh, uh, I will always advocate for a communicative approach when it comes to learning a second language. Oh, okay, very good, very good. Uh, Anna says, studying for the TOEFL tests is a real arduous task, but it can end up being more than beneficial for myself. Okay, very good. I like those examples, guys. Very good and very, they sound very intellectual with all those big words, yes? Okay, so excellent, very good. But like I said, don't only use one time try to use as much as possible and impress your friends, no? I mean, uh, when, you, when you're out with your friends, say, hey, do you wanna know a new vocabulary word? And just say the word, yes? Okay, very good. Now, five activities to take effective notes on the TOEFL IBT. During the TOEFL IBT, students will need to take notes quickly and efficiently, yes? So what are some of the things or tips that I can tell you? When you're taking notes, don't write a whole sentence but write a word, a keyword that is going to help you remember some type, type of idea, yes? So if the speaker says, studying for the TOEFL test is a real arduous task, but it can end up being more than beneficial for myself, maybe one of the words that you can use is arduous. And you can remember that arduous is something difficult, yes? Something complicated. And so you write down arduous. So when you're either writing the essay section or when you're either speaking, you can even use that word to answer the question. And you can say, yes, I agree. Uh, uh, preparing for the TOEFL exam is very arduous because it has four sections or it tests the four abilities. So don't, don't forget, not only to use it one time, but to try to use it as many times as possible. And then you're also going to see that the more that you use certain vocabularies, the more natural it is going to sound, yes? And it's not going to sound 
very like forced you know, into your conversations. Can we continue with the next one, please? Thank you. Using an outline is an effective way to organize information. Uh, mind maps are also a visual way to organize ideas and concepts. And after the test, encourage students to review and revise their notes. Yes. So uh, what you can do also, like practicing the vocabulary, you can also practice taking notes, okay? How can you do this? Uh, get on YouTube, open up, uh, I don't know, a little video where they're talking about a topic of a university. Listen for it. Look, look for videos that are short. Don't, don't try to look for videos that are very long, maybe a five minute video or a two or three minute video, and then begin to take notes. Listen for keywords or words that you can use to uh, answer certain questions. Yes, according to what they're saying. And then once you have done that, begin to write an essay, but use your cell phone in another way. Put a, the timer and say, okay, I am going to try to write something for a minute. So you write it, try to have a, a structure to it. Okay, I'm going to begin with this. The body of my essay is going to be this and my conclusion is going to be this, yes? And try to write something under a minute. The more you practice this, the better it is going to get for you, yes? And also think about this. You are not only preparing yourself for the exam, but you're also preparing yourself when you go to the United States and you're in a university. Because what, what is something that you're going to be doing? Taking notes, you're going to be doing a, a summary of what you heard, and you're also going to be uh, interacting with the teacher uh, talking about the topic. Yes. Fabiola says, contemplate different, different kinds of visual materials and pictures to associate the grammar or, or vocabulary. Helps to understand the current program. Okay, very good, Fabiola. I like that. Very good, very good. Uh, okay, now uh, don't forget, uh, Fabiola, to put a period at the end of your idea. Yes, my teacher used to say, if you don't put a period, the idea is not finished. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's continue, please. The next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, how do you improve your speaking score? As you practice TOEFL speaking, record your responses to TOEFL speaking topics and then listen back to them. Make sure that you speak for 45 or 60 seconds and in each topic accordance with the official time limit for your particular speaking task. Going back to what I was saying, Diana, I'm going to read yours in a minute. Yes, because it looks very good. Okay, so like I said, think of questions that are not very common. Do, do you guys remember when you were little kids and you would always ask why, 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 why? Well, but in this case, try to be a little bit more, uh, in depth with your questions, no? For example, why is the sky blue? And then contemplate, what would you answer, no? The more, the, the, the more the, that you practice this mentally, the better you are going to get at, yes? Think of it like an FBI exercise, no? Where they're asking you questions and you're only thinking about specific things that you want to answer. No, 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 don't add any uh, uh, other information to your answer but very specific uh, information, yes? So this is something that you can do. And like I was telling you before, here, this is uh, another place where you can use your cell phone. So uh, you look at the question, you record yourself on the cell phone, and then after that, listen to your recording, yes? And now th there is something very interesting that you can do. Uh, Word has the application where you can put the voice and then it, it'll write out what you said. And then you can see where your mistakes are written, yes? And then try to correct those mistakes. So again, ask yourself the same question, record yourself and see if you have improved between the first time and the second time. And maybe you can do it even a third time, yes? And, and try to see what vocabulary or what different vocabulary or synonyms or antonyms can I use to improve my answer? And remember that this answer could be written or this answer could be spoken, yes? 
So I'm going to read what Diana uh, wrote because I think it's important to include everybody. I believe that when it comes to vocabulary, the best way to learn is to associate the word with something familiar. So I would make an example with those words in sentences with a context familiar for me. Excellent, Diana, I agree. The more that you practice the vocabulary in contexts that are familiar with you or th that it's something that you know, it is going to be better for you, yes? Uh, of course, if you make an example and inside of the example, it's not very clear. You know, it's it's like when, when we leave homework for the students and then the, the, the students come with a very fancy essay with big vocabulary and things like that. And then you ask the student, uh, what's this word? And the student says, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, just make sure that the words that you are writing, you try to understand them and then try to use them accordingly, yes? And like Diane said, try to use contexts that are familiar for you, yes? That, that, that would be the best way to learn vocabulary also. Thank you very much, Diane. Uh, Diana, a very good example, yes? Uh, can we continue with the presentation, please? Uh, once you finish speaking, listen to your recording and uh, and uh, evaluate yourself using the TOEFL speaking rubric. If you go to the TOEFL ETS, there, there you can find the rubrics that are used to grade your speaking. And then you can look at the rubric according to what you what you said, and you can see where in the rubric you are at. Yes, are you speaking at once? Or are you speaking in numbers twos? Or are you speaking in number threes? Or are you speaking in number fours? Of course, four is the highest and ones is the lowest, yes? So what can you do if you think that you're speaking in ones, what can you do to improve to go to the number fours? Yes, let's continue with the next one, please. Thank you. As you grade yourself, ask yourself the following questions. Do you answer the prompt completely? Are you clear and easy to understand? Do you stumble over your words or pause too much? Do you make many grammatical mistakes? So these little practices that I'm mentioning to you are going to help you to avoid all of these things, yes? Because sometimes when people ask us a question, they say, what is your opinion about learning the vocabulary? And you say, uh, uh, well, I think that it's good, uh, uh, uh. no? And we make many pauses. And sometimes we just say whatever is the first thing that comes to our mind, but we're not really answering the question. So make sure that whatever you're saying, that you're actually answering the question and that uh, you're not making many pauses. Yes, remember that in the TOEFL exam, they're trying to see if you're able to uh, first understand what you read. Second, if you are able to communicate very in a very clear and precise way, your answer. Can we continue with the next one, please? The writing section. Can we continue with the next, please? Thank you. The TOEFL ABT writing section is designed to measure your ability to write in English in an academic setting. And you're expected to be able to present your ideas in a clear, well-organized manner. Yes, very important. This is very important. The next one, please. In this case, you are going to get two writing tasks similar to the speaking. So in this case, you're going to get an integrated writing task and an independent writing tasks. So in the integrated writing task, you might get a listening and then you might get a reading and you need to contrast both of those. Or you might tell your opinion uh, or what is the difference between one or the other. So you have to uh, read and then listen and then write your answer, yes? They might, they might ask you for 300 words, 400 words, and this is something that you need to also practice. Say, okay, I'm going to write something for 200 words, but I'm going to answer this question. Again, what are you going, how can you improve your writing? Begin with something very small. Think of something creative that you can write about, no? For example, uh, describe a cat or describe a dog and try to describe as much as, as, as you can. And then from there, build up a little bit more. Now you're not going to describe an animal. Now you are going to talk about what 
you did last week, no? And, but try to be as detailed as possible. And then little by little, and of course, trying to use different synonyms, different antonyms, different gram grammatical structures and things like that, yes? Okay, and then the independent writing task takes 30 minutes, yes? And uh, write on an essay based on personal experience or opinion in response to a writing topic. Thank you. Can we continue with the next one, please? Five tips to focus your efforts towards improving your score. Take notes on what you read and hear. Listen to record lectures in English. Practice finding the main points and taking notes. Learn important phrases that help you figure out what is happening. Pay attention to your grammar and sentence structure. Study the organization of good paragraphs and essays. And I would like to ask you guys, because Diana had a very good idea about the vocabulary. Do you have any tips or tricks that you would like to share with everybody else? Something that you do in writing or in speaking. So if you can, can you write that in the chat, please? Something very brief, something that you do and that you see that it works for you or that you see that it works for your students. Because sometimes some activities that we give our students also work for us as teachers. Can we continue with the next one, please? So if you can, take a minute and write something there, yes? Now, changes in the TOEFL IBT 2023. Uh, this is going to be some, some, some changes that the TOEFL IBT is going to have. Shorten TOEFL IBT test, streamline instructions and navigation throughout the test, a new, more modern writing for an academic discussion task, which replaces the previous independent writing tasks, a shorter reading section, and the removal of all unscored test questions. Okay, those are some of the differences that we are going to see in the TOEFL exam, yes? Also, increased score transparency beginning July 26, 2023. Not yet, but in a few months. Test takers will see their official scores release date upon completion of the test. So you know when your results will be in, yes? They will be receiving real-time notification of changes to their score status. And let me read something that Alexandra wrote here. And it says, I pretend that I am in, in an interview and start answering questions that I make myself. Excellent. Very good, uh, good ideas, Alexandra. Thank you very much. Well, guys, my time of this part of the section is over. I, I will still be here for Q&A section. So if you have any questions, please don't forget them. So you can ask me later on, okay? Thank you very much. and. I will give the floor to uh, Adri Molina. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis. Thank you for the great tips and, and advices. Uh, we are going to continue with another important part of our, um, uh, our workshop. We have um, a current, actually a current grantee of this program. I think she is here. Okay, Ale de la Rocha, welcome. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much, Adri. Thank you for the invitation. I'm glad to Oh, thank you very much. And thank uh, Luis again for all the information received. So we are going to start with Ale. Ale is going to share some, some experiences related to TOEFL, but also related to her experience overall. The floor is yours, Ale. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much. And good afternoon, everyone. As Adri mentioned, I'm going to share with you some of my experiences while being a grantee, but also I'm gonna give you some tips to prepare for the TOEFL. I presented the TOEFL three times over the last mm, one year and a half. So I think I am familiar as well. Well, the first thing that I would like to share with you is that it's important that you familiarize with the format of the TOEFL. Uh, if I'm not wrong, um, the Fulbright asks you to take the IBT format, but it is important for you to know um, the length of the um, test, the sections of it, and the type of questions that they have in this test. It's also important that you practice regularly, and I will say like practice daily, because sometimes, or in my own experience in Mexico, I didn't have that much experience, no, no experience, but room to practice within a daily base. So I had to do it 
on my own. So I had to um, set special times throughout my day to practice uh, with simple tests, sim simple questions, and books that you can find online to prepare for the TOEFL. Something that Albert mentioned, and it is very important, is to improve your vocabulary. You can use apps to do that. There are uh, several in the for your cell phone. Uh, you can use flashcards, as he also mentioned. And something else that I did that helped me a lot was reading different passages or texts from different natures, not just academic, but um, related to ge geography or history. And then I will notice any vocabulary that I will find like tricky, then I will look for it and I will try to apply the vocabulary into uh, my, into the use that I gave to the language. It is important that you focus on your weaknesses, as Albert said. Um, it's important that you first identify them, then you obviously invest more time on them, but do not neglect the, or the other areas of the, of the test. It's important that, that you practice all the skills and try to get better on those where you have weaknesses. Take practice tests, as I mentioned in one of the previous points. It is important for you so you can see how the questions are structured. Also, it's important that you improve your listening skills. I did this through um, listening to podcasts. I love watching TV shows. I love and I watch a lot, a lot in English. You can also do it with uh, subtitles if that's easier for you, but I will strongly recommend to listen to bits of um, programs or movies or TV shows, and then try to understand without the, the subtitles. And then you might replay it with the subtitles to see if what you understand was the correct thing. And also, you can practice taking notes while you are listening to it. Um, the last one and very important is to learn to manage your time. You have a specific time designated for each of the parts of the test. And sometimes um, those who take it forget about it or they get very anxious. They, the time passes very fast when you're doing a task in which you are struggling and then you spend too much time in that task that when the other task, when it's time for you to do the other or complete the other task, you run out of time. Put your mind change to the next slide. Thank you. And this are, these are some extra tips that no one told me, but after doing the test so many times, I learned. The first one is that you have to make sure that you are comfortable when taking the test. Um, regarding clothing, the chair that you are using, the room temperature. I took this uh, test one in a two times in a school and once in my house because um, the centers were closed. So it is important that you are wearing clothing that is comfortable because you're going to be sitting for a long time. Um, again, the chair is also important. Sometimes you can select the chair that you're using, for example, if you are at home but I think most of you are gonna do it in an institution. And what I did the second time I had it is that I took like a cushion so I could sit on it or put it in my back because we're not getting any younger here. <laughs> and my back hurts a lot if I am uh, uncomfortable and that can get you distracted from the, the test you're doing. That's something very important. And if you can control the room temperature too, that's very easy. Um, something else is that is regarding the speaking section and as, as Albert mentioned it is important that you are not too slow but also that you are not too fast when you are talking sometimes we um we have the misconception that the faster we talk the more fluent we sound but sometimes you are not as as the um as we just review sometimes you are not answering the question so you have to make sure that what you are answering makes sense, that it's clear, and most importantly, that you are answering the question that is being asked. Um, other two things that are important is that you sleep well, not only the night before or leading to the exam, 
but all of the nights before or leading to the exit. Uh, because if you slept late um, throughout the week, but then one night before you sleep early, you still are going to be sleep deprivated. So I will encourage you to have a good um, week of sleep at least. Also, eat before the exam. Obviously, do not eat too much because you're going to have to be sitting, completing the test. But I will, I will not recommend to take this test without having eaten something before or before you drank some water. And most importantly is that you have to believe in yourself. If you, go in, if you get into the room thinking that this exam is too hard or I'm not prepared or uh, oh, I'm gonna fail, then probably you will because that's what you're telling yourself to yourself. But you have to believe that you can do it and you will. Can we go to the next slide, please? And well, as um, Adrian mentioned, I'm a current FLTA. I will finish uh, next week. And I'm gonna share you a little bit of my experience, but I can already tell you that it has been amazing. So before leading to this, um, to this experience or being assignated here, uh, my process of selection was the same as yours. I sent my papers. I was um, required to have an interview, which went great. It was with a panel of people who had different questions. However, after the interview, I got shortlisted. You know, this is a very uh, demanding um, scholarship because it's worth it. It's amazing. Yet, well, I was shortlisted and I thought, nothing was going to change because who wouldn't want to accept this scholarship? However, sorry, this happened in December, let's say. And then last June, I got an email and I thought, maybe this is a spam <laughs> because it said that I was, um, that I passed to the main list and that I was going to be assignated to a school. The people who doesn't get shortlisted, they get to select some of the universities or they are offered a list of options and they, they rank them. However, as I was shortlisted and I was a late placement, I was assignated to the college. I did not have the opportunity to select. However, I think that was the best thing that could happen to me because I will probably have chosen the school in which I am is a community college. It's in a very, very small town of Wyoming. Uh, and if you, well, when I saw the paper and I looked for the college in Google, I was scared. I was like, oh, I'm going to a very remote place. Um, I was surprised. But then when I came here, my perspective changed as I'm gonna tell you in the following slide. Um, well, the visa and the work permit from my school went great. Uh, I got my visa approved very fast and everything was very, I was, can we go to the next one? Well, when I was assigned, um, When I started teaching, I they told me before coming here that I was going to be the primary professor. That means that I'm in charge of the Spanish classes here. I only have a supervisor, but that supervisor supervises the whole humanities area. It's not that I have someone who teaches Spanish and tells me what to do. So I had to learn how to do a syllabus for a college. I had to learn how to use the platform, both from the college and from the Spanish program that they already have. Um, I have the freedom to plan my classes as I wanted um, and use the time as I needed to. Uh, also the classes, well, and then the classes I thought, as I said, I had the freedom to do what I thought it was the best for my students, which was amazing. The college, even though it's, a very, it's in a very small town, um, has all the facilities. The school itself, the building, you have access to everything. Well, I had access to everything. And the classes I took, obviously, it was a very different experience from the classes that I took 
back in Mexico. In Mexico, I have my master's degree and obviously my bachelor. And the classes that I take here are very different from the ones I took in Mexico. Can I go to the next one? During this, um, sorry, during during also I had the chance to organize, uh, or I had the um, responsibility to organize events as a professor. Uh, I was in charge of the Spanish club too, um, and I organized events to, to do piñatas within the college and in the community. I went to the book library. Um, we organized dinners. We organized parties or Mexican night. I attended several or many events as a student. We travel uh, around the area, but also I traveled by myself um, around the United States, which was another great part of the whole experience. Can we go to the next slide? And well, now that I'm about to finish this journey, which has been great. Um, the options that I have after and or when I come to Mexico are great. As many of you, I'm an English teacher in Mexico. I already have my tenure or plaza, as we call it in Mexico. So I can go back and teach in that plaza, but also now I know that I can do more since I have learned many things related to different teaching styles and the American educational and can we go to the last one? And well, the future is bright once you have been over it. Thank you very much. And thank you, you very questions. much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ale. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you, Luis. I think this has been a very deluxe uh, session with uh, both of your uh, presence here. I'm going to uh, uh, deliver the floor to Magali, who I think has a couple of questions for you. Yes, we have some questions that we have received. And the first one is, what type of materials are included in the test? Is there a list of reading, listening topics? This one is for Luis. Uh, before ETS, I'm saying before because I don't know at this moment if they if they're still doing it. But before they would give you a small little booklet, and inside of the booklet it would come with examples of reading of uh, the grammar section of the speaking no grammar reading and the listening section. Yes, and it, the listening it would come with the transcript. Now. If you are looking for material for the IBT, what I would recommend is to go into the ETS page, the homepage, and then there look for the IBT exam. You're going to find there's some there's a section that says students, teachers. I would recommend that you go into the, the student section and then there there's some practice exams. Yes. Also, there is a page. I, I'm not sure if I can mention the page, but I will. <laughs> It's called Magush, Magush TOEFL. If you look for it that way, you're going to find a lot of examples, a lot of resources to do the TOEFL exam. And not only for the TOEFL exam, you can also find for the IELTS and other exams that are available, no? But for the TOEFL, it's that. I, I don't know if they continue giving out the little booklets, but before they would give them out, yes? But if they don't, you have all of the resources that are in the, on the page of, ETS, yes, ETS uh, is the organization that uh, handles all of the TOEFL exams worldwide, not only in Mexico, but in all the countries. I've shared the little booklet, but digitally. So you can just ah, click on it and excellent. go there. Yeah. Thank you. Another Thank you. important good. point here, Luis, I think this, this question sets the, the opportunity to clarify that TOEFL covers academic topics in nature. Uh, that is, you are not going to find just chitty chatting or a, I don't know, romantic novel in the reading text. You are going to find only academic related topics. So you really need to be aware of that. Let's continue. And, and, and I would like to make a little bit of publicity for Education USA, but Education USA has a lot of material, physical material to prepare for the TOEFL IBT exam. So 
if you're able to go directly to one of the centers, go and they should be able to lend you or you can search through the materials that they have and their big books are about this big, yeah. And then I think that there was another question, Magali? Yes, there's another question. Um, how long is the test, the TOEFL IBT test? Okay, if we're talking of, well, if, you, if, we're, if we're talking about the IBT one, before it was approximately three hours. But remember that there's going to be a modification in the exam. The, the, some sections are going to be shortened. So if the, if the exam, uh, some sections are shortened, well, guess what's going to happen to the exam? Instead of three hours, it might be two hours or a little bit less than two, uh, a two hour exam. But like Alejandra said, go with uh, comfortable clothing, uh, take a little bit of water, uh, don't eat something that is going to make you sleepy. For example, don't eat in the morning before the exam a torta or a guajolotera, no? because what's going to happen to your body? You're going to get tired. And then midway through the exam, you're going to be, eh, no? So what can you eat? Maybe some fruit, maybe some, ve some vegetables, or take a fruit or take some vegetables. No? So if they give you a little break, you can eat at that moment, and then you can continue with the exam. Thank you. And now we are going to continue with one more question for Ale. And Ale, um, here a student is asking, how did you manage anxiety during, after <laughs> the test? Um, well, I personal, personally, I try to, I think anxiety is just a way that you, you are like thinking that you are not good enough. And as I said, I think it is important that before you take it, you truly believe that you are doing your best and that you're trying your best. Always, this is something that I do. Every time that I'm gonna do something that I know is very important, uh, I will say, I will tell to me, like this is just the two hours of my whole life. I know it's something very important. I know that. But you have to try to calm yourself. That's, that's another reason why you should not like be drinking or relying on coffee before the test or they prior the test. You have to try to eat well, sleep well, be calm, try to not experience any um, event that will get you off. I will say, if you also get anxiety, it might be because you feel that you are not prepared enough. But as we have been talking, if you um, take the time to prepare yourself leading to the test, then there is no reason to be anxious. If you always give your best, then you can be sure that what you are gonna give is your best. We don't always get what um, we want, that's true. But if you, do what you know you have to do. I think it, is, it, it will be easier for you to perform well and be calm and do not get anxious. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandra. Those are great tips. And thank you, Luis, for all the advice. We will continue with our contact info. Um, here you can find our email address our social media. And remember, we started our um, podcast that is Education USA Voices Mexico. So if you can also go and look to start practicing your listening, that will be a great tip. So um, thank you um, for joining us today and see you next time. We still have one more session. Good luck. See you soon.